Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. I know that it's not, probably not the most appropriate time for, for somebody to come to Washington, but uh, this is what, uh, what was decided by my friend. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Dr. Radovan. Uh, uh, thank you to the uh, Yemeni friends. And thank you, for all of us, to be here. Uh, I know you know a lot about what's happening in Tunisia and in the Arab world, so I will be as brief as possible so we can have a discussion because fortunately we are a small group so we can have a discussion and I really am interested in knowing exactly what's your opinion, what's your what's, uh, reflection. I, much, I am very interested in sharing our common thoughts more than uh, giving you my uh, narrative because I think a lot of you know exactly what is my narrative. So for a political actor, because I am still a political actor, I am still involved in politics, I am still fighting for, uh, for a democratic state in Tunisia. Uh, I'm in this field for more than five decades, imagine, but I'm still decided you know, to go on and uh, to never give up, even if we have had this black slide in uh, the last 10 years. The battle for freedom, for having a, a, a you know, democratic state is a matter of generation. It's not a matter of, you know, it's, it takes generation and generation. It's my honor to be just a link, you know, between the fight for, of my father and our father and grandfather, you know, against colonialism and to be this, the link, you know, to the, the fight is still going on and be sure that I'm not going to, to give up. So. For a uh, political actor, three questions for the, the moment now. For the moment, three uh, questions. What to fear, what to expect, and what to do. What to fear, what to expect, what to do to respond to this question. We, ha we, we must have a clear idea about what happened and why did it fail, fail, you know, why did it fail? Because if you don't have a clear opinion, image or a framework of what happened and why it felt, I think we cannot respond to the question what to fear, what to expect, and what to do. Let me give you the five points of my narrative, the way of I see what happened and why did it fail, because it failed, yes, sure, but uh, I always say that the Arab Spring is in the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. So it's, it's not accurate to, take, to, to, to talk about failure if we are just in the beginning of the process. Five points, you know, to res resume my, uh, my narrative. First, our people, the Arab people, mainly in Yemen, in Syria, and in Libya, and also in Tunisia and in, uh, uh, in Egypt, we, we are victims of what I call the double crime the double crime of the, the ruling elites. Our people are once again victims of a double crime committed by this ruling elite. The first crime is that because of their incompetence economically, because of their corruption morally, because of the repression politically, they have pushed our people to revolt. It's the, the, the revolution is the main responsibility of, the, the, uh, of this uh, ruling elite. So this is what the first crime, pushing the people because they have refused everything, every kind of reform. They have pushed the people to the, uh, our people to revolt. The second crime is that they have organized everything, you know, to block, to, 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 to sabotage what was, and I hope still be, still a, a, a peaceful and democratic revolution. They had done everything. This is why I'm uh, talking about the crime. Look what the situation in Yemen. Look at the situation in Syria. Look at the situation in Libya. Look at the situation everywhere. It is a crime because we, you have uh, millions of refugees, uh, millions of Syrian refugees, millions of people starving in Yemen, mi mi millions of people, you know. This is why I don't like, you know, the image of Arab Spring. For me, it's completely ridiculous to talk about Arab Spring because when you think Spring, once again, you think uh, beautiful times and uh, beautiful birds singing, etc. While, in fact, it was what happened to our people is a real catastrophe. And this catastrophe, I think, once again, is the responsibility of this ruling elite because they, once they pushed our people to the bush and then they done everything, every crime, you know, to stop it. So we have been victims of our elite, our political elite. Second point is uh, 
we are victim also. I don't like very much the concept of victim because it's a, it's a battle, you know, it's a, it's a fight. So, but I would put victims and uh, I can say that we have been victims once again of the, the most brutal and the most uh, uh, corrupt dictatorship in the region. The Saudi, the Emiratis, the Iranian, they have done everything you know, to interfere in our pl This is why I don't think that um, democracy is no longer a domestic issue. Democracy, the promoting democracy everywhere now is a, reg a regional and international issue. And this is, I think, we didn't realize in Tunisia in the beginning of the revolution that that we will be in the, you know, in the center of something we couldn't expect, we couldn't imagine. I have always said that Tunisia is, because it's a small country, because Tunisia is far from the Middle East, because we don't have oil, etc., etc., we are going to, to, to have our, to mind our own business and nobody would be interested in us. In fact, it was a complete error because I was surprised to, to, to see that the wave of the Tunisian revolution reaching Libya, Egypt, and, and go, etc., etc. So, because, because the, the Tunisian revolution was, uh, you know, a threat, a serious threat to a lot of political regime, I think we have been victims of the intervention of this dictatorship and they destroyed our country. Libya, Syria, and Yemen have destroyed, totally destroyed by the foreign intervention. So talking about the fact that, so, oh, Arab Spring has failed because Arabs are not worth of democracy, etc. Bullshit, it's not that. It's, it, it's because mainly of the intervention of this uh, dictatorship. And here I come to the, uh, the external factor to say that, unfortunately, we saw that the dictatorship did everything to sabotage the, you know, the, the democratization process. Unfortunately, this is what I'm repeating all the time, unfortunately, we saw that the democracy, the Western democracy, did almost nothing in order to support us. And this is also, to, we have to take this, in, to, to remember this when we, we try to respond to the question, what to do. So first, we have been victims of the elite, the so-called elite. We have been victims of uh, the intervention of the dictatorship because we, they are afraid of the Tunisian revolution, afraid of the, what, could have, what could be the connotation. And I think they are right. Look what's happening in Iran now. What's happening in Iran is exactly is, you know, the continuation of the wave uh, uh, started in Tunisia 10 years ago, 11 years ago. But uh, let me uh, add some, uh, a point, an important point to the, the fact that the Western democracy didn't support our revolution. I think they are going to pay the high price for, for, for this mistake because it's, it's not only a moral mistake but also a political mistake. Because what's happened, if you have uh, uh, the situation, if the situation would, uh, you know, would uh, worsen day after day. You will have more and more instability, political instability, more and more repression, more, etc. Well, that means that we will have a flow of refugees going to Europe, flow of refugees going to the United States, etc. And this will be probably the most important factor to strengthen the far right in Europe. This is why uh, in Europe now you have the comeback of the far right in Italy, in Sweden, in, uh, uh, in, in Denmark, in uh, that, uh, of course, in Poland and uh, in, uh, in Hungary. And you, you know that the far right is anti-democratic everywhere. So because they are not, because the Western democracy are not helping us, you know, to promote our democracy, maybe they are also undermining their own democracy. And th this have to be, th I think you have, we, here in the United States, you have to remind the political actor that, look, because you are not, the democracy is now a fight everywhere, and it's an international, regional international fight. So if democracy is defeated in the Arab world, it will be defeated here. This is probably the most important lesson uh, I think that should be drawn from what happened in, in, in this our region. And the second, uh, beside the, the external factor, the Arab Spring also failed because of internal factors, yes, of course. Mainly the division, the division 
between Islamists and, uh, and secularists. And I'm afraid this divide between secularists and Islamists is not known. I, I've tried my best during 10 years to bridge the, this gap between Islamists and, and, uh, and secularists, but I'm afraid that it didn't work, and I'm afraid that this bridge is not going to, is, it's broken now, it's broken, and I'm afraid that the gap would, would be larger and larger, and I am afraid and I, I can say, I'll be frank with you, because of the mistakes by, made by the Islamist party, mainly in other Indonesia, you know, accepting to deal with the counter revolution, there is no more faith, there is no more, um, I, th I think that there is something broken between the Islamists and the, the secularists like me, and this would probably be one of the reasons that the process would be much more difficult than, than before. And then, I will end with uh, the fact that, okay, uh, we have lost the battle, the counter-revolution has, uh, has won, but now the situation is very, very, um, I wouldn't say very ridiculous, because yes, the, the, the revolution failed, but also the counter-revolution failed also. When you look at the situation in Egypt, when you look at the situation in Tunisia, you see that, the, of, of course, the counter revolution has done everything, you know, so that um, so they so we don't succeed. And they succeeded in making us not succeed. But the counterpart, you have the total failure, the total bankruptcy of the counter revolution. Look at the situation in Tunisia. Look at the situation in Egypt. I'm not talking about the situation in, in Yemen and in Syria and Libya because it's it's caricature of a failure. It's something t t t terrible. But and what's what makes me a little bit optimistic is the fact that for the people now, for the Tunisian people, they saw uh, the two kinds of alternative uh, to, to, to democracy. In Egypt, the alternative to democracy, because uh, it, it was the alternative, is the uh, uh, dictatorship, uh, a harsh dictatorship, much more corrupt and much more violent than the dictatorship before the revolution. So they, they, the Egyptian people now is, are uh, watching what it means exactly to lose uh, uh, to lose a revolution uh, a transition and in Tunisia Tunisian people are watching every day what does it mean to have a populist regime because you know the, the alternative to democracy in Tunisia was populism and the, uh, the alternative to democracy in Egypt was a, a, a dictator harsher dictatorship than before so this is, this is the situation now. What to fear? Uh, you know, uh, in 2000, uh, 11, 2010, nobody was expecting what's going to happen in Tunisia. I remember that in 2006, I went on Al Jazeera program and I addressed it to the Tunisian people, telling the Tunisian people, now it's, it's time to take, to take to the street. It's time, you know, to... Uh, you know, to get rid of this corrupt dictatorship, etc. And decided at the time I decided to go back to Tunisia because I, I, I said I cannot appeal to the Tunisian people to take the streets while I'm in Paris. So I decided to go back. I wanted to Tunisia in 2006. Nobody moved. Nobody, you know, uh, nothing happened. And uh, uh, I was obliged to leave once again Tunisia. And I thought at that time maybe I'm not going to see any kind of revolution on my lifetime. In fact, five year, four, four or five years after, then you have the, the, the volcano, the, the eruption of the volcano. Uh, last week, last week, 11-11, the, the Egyptian revolution called the Egyptian people to take to the street, and I joined this appeal. I went on television, network, saying, hey, you, Egyptian people, Tunisian people, take to the street, it's time to get rid, etc. Et Nothing happened. Nothing happened, nobody took to the street. And I understood that, in fact, you cannot, you, you know, it's, I told you that I don't like the image of Arab Spring, I prefer also to use the image of volcano, Arab volcanoes. Uh, and you know that the Arab vol volcano, you never, you never know when the volcano would erupt. You just know that it would erupt, but you never know. And this is exactly what the volcano ha have their own time, uh, uh, own rhythm, all time. You cannot order to a volcano, hey, volcano, could you please explode? He wouldn't listen to you. You have, he listened, it's own regime, it's own, yeah, it's it own uh, 
pressure, etc. So what I am sure of is that we are going to have a new explosion. This is what I fear. When, I don't know. Nobody, nobody knows. Uh, what I fear most also that the, the next uh, explosion would be much more violent than in the beginning of the, 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 the so-called Arab Spring because sure that we uh, uh, in Tunisia for instance we just have 300 people dead killed just 2,000 people wounded when we compare to the the, 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 pri the price paid by the Yemeni, the Syrian, and the Libyan, it's nothing. But of course it was something. But I'm afraid that the next um, outburst, the next explosion of the volcanoes, the price would be higher and higher and higher everywhere. Why? Because now there is a lot of hatred and frustration among the population, among the youth, you know, because they, they saw that the, they didn't get anything from the first revolution, and they are complaining that people like me and like and we have tried, you know, to be, um, to reach this kind of consensus of the, of, of the regime, you know, to talk about transition and justice, et cetera, et cetera. But for the new generation, I, I'm afraid that they, you, you forget about this, forget about all this. Those people, you know, are criminals. They, uh, they pushed us to revolution. They did everything, you know, to stop us. They are, look what they, we are going to get rid of them. I am afraid there is so much hatred now in the youth that I am afraid that really we are going to have both. And the other side, and the other side, the, the, the counter revolution, they know that they are hated. They know that uh, they have a lot of blood on their hands. And I am sure that they are extremely scared. They are extremely afraid. And they would do everything, you know, to stop uh, any kind of revolution. This is exactly what's happening in Egypt, you know. So what I fear most is that probably we can have a burst of violence, and this would be t terrible because I'm, I'm afraid that Tunisia or Egypt could, ha could uh, uh, take the example, would have exactly the same fate that uh, Yemen or, uh, or Libya. And I see any kind of, uh, of solution uh, in Yemen or, uh, or uh, in Syria. Now, I, I come to the, the other point, what to do. What, this is what, what, what I fear most, uh, what to do. Uh, normally, when you are a wise man or a wise person, you would say, I must avoid this kind of fate. We are fed up with violence. We, we are, this, the, the economic situation is worsening. The politi political situation is worsening. We, we are threatening by the climate change. You probably know that our region is much, it's really the region that is endangered by the, uh, uh, by the climate change. So normally, we would say, we are, we are really under uh, it be a question of survival. So we had to, to reach a consensus. Let's talk with the government. Let's talk with the people now in, in charge to avoid this kind of uh, fight. But can you imagine a CC talking to Ayman Nour? Can you imagine Kai Sai talking with me? I don't think so. Unfortunately, I don't think so. I, those people, you know, are extremely scared. They are in their own narrative, in own ideology, and uh, I'm afraid that there is no way uh, to have this. What would be the, the, the best solution is to, to, to discuss, uh, to, to find a kind of uh, consensus about peaceful transition. About, but I'm not. Uh, I'm convinced that, that would never happen. So, what else? What should be done? Could, for instance, the government here in the United States, in Europe, put a lot of pressure on, uh, because the, the dictatorship are the client of the states, put the pressure on them, you know. For instance, for the IMF loan, okay, we are going to give you the money, you know, to get rid of, uh, to solve some of your pro problems, but you have, you know, to make some concessions, some political concession. I'm not sure that also will be done. Look what's happening, what, what's happening. Uh, the two dictators are invited here in Washington in, uh, in December for the African-American summit. And uh, you remember that weeks ago, we have had the summit of the Francophonie in, uh, in, uh, in Jerba, and uh, no problem, you know, the, uh, two days, days ago. And no problem, the, the dem democratic leader of Canada, the democratic leader of France, the democratic leader of, of the country, you know, they went, no problem, you know, to support the dicta dictator that have closed the parliament, that put jailing 
that is generating a lot of uh, journals, etc. No problem. So once again here, I am not sure that it, it would work. I, it would be business as usual. Uh, the Western government has always supported the dictatorship and they will never stop doing this. They have their reason and we have to accept it. So uh, this is why I'm telling to my friend uh, that we have to rely on ourselves and nothing else. Of course, we must do everything we can. We must try, must try, but I don't think that something would, important would, would change. So, what to do is, once again, to rely on ourselves, to resume the fight. To resume the fight mainly is, you know, to, to try to, and this is what I am working for, and we are a lot of people working for, you know, every, first to have, uh, to consolidate a kind of uh, democratic network within every state. And this is what we're working for in, in Tunisia. And uh, because I had the Arab Council for, uh, for the Democratic Revolution, we are also trying to build a network of democratic leaders of the, uh, every, uh, of the, the as many country, uh, Arab countries possible, because we do know that we have to support ourselves. Because otherwise, we, we, you know, if we face every, uh, every democratic movement facing its dictatorship uh, without a link with the other fighters in the other worlds, in the other, uh, other parts of the world, Arab world, it's, it's, um, it's not a good solution because the, we are fighting a common enemy and the common enemy, they are working together. I, I can assure you that the, the dictatorship are working together, are linking our, all their efforts, you know, to stop this wave of democratization. I think I'm going to stop here because I would like to have your, uh, your opinion and also your uh, insight and maybe your, uh, help me to, to, to know what, what to do because it's really a matter, extremely complex, extremely difficult. Uh, I don't have a receipt. I don't know if somebody has a receipt. But all what I can assure you that we are going to fight. We are going to, we never forget, give up. And we, Yes, we have a lot of reason to be pessimistic, but we have also a lot of reason to be optimistic. The reason to be optimistic, once again, is the fact that we have a new generation, what I call the E generation, and this E generation uh, is committed to new values, and this new generation will never accept to be ruled as their grand grandfather was ruled by the, the regime of oppression of one man, one tribe, one group, etc., having for them the, the wealth, having the consideration, having for them the power, and leaving the, the rest of the population, you know, in the, the, the misery you, you do know. So uh, we are going to, fa to, to fight. We are going to, uh, the process is still uh, going on. We have lost the, the, the battle, but I always say that uh, uh, we are going to, with the, to win the war. Uh, you, you have talked about the, uh, the main idea, I repeat everywhere to the people who are a little bit discouraged, a little bit, you know, uh, they are tired very early. I always say, look, it took three, uh, 3,000 years to get rid of slavery. It took 400 years to get rid of colonialism. It will probably take many, many, many decades to get rid of dictatorship, but be sure that we got rid of, of slavery, we got rid of uh, you know, colonies, we are going to get rid of, of, the, uh, of dictatorship. I repeat this because it's very, I would say, very, not very funny, but I'm surprised that to see young people, you know, defeated very, very, very soon because we have lost the battle, saying, oh, the hard spring is over, we have nothing to, 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 to hope, etc., etc. So this is why I'm trying to, to let them think. think um, Consider the long term, not only the, the very, very short term. A decade is nothing in the history of a nation. It's nothing. It's just, you know, like, like this. Tunisia is 3,000 years old. So 10 years is nothing. It's just a, a moment. This is why I repeat and I repeat, I repeat to the people, stick to our values, stick to our hope, and we will win. And my, uh, my slogan is we have just one choice, to win or to win. Thank you for your attention.